powerful. I can compare a strong and weak person with, you know, the wolf and the goose. The strong person is the wolf. When the wolf is wounded, it's running in the opposite direction of its pack, not to bring the hunter, who will kill the rest of the pack. But if the goose is wounded, it's breaking into its flock, screaming for help. And that's it. All the flock will be shot. This is the difference between a strong one and a weak one. People don't have power. Everything people possess is given to them by the Almighty. Everything we possess is given by God and the way we manage it, right or wrong. He gives strength to someone and they're crying that they can't. But you just got to be patient and you'll be able to do anything. When I hold my breath in the swimming pool, they tell me sometimes, like, every 30 seconds they say, 30, minute, minute and a half, two. And I have to do it three times, three minutes each. When they say it's two minutes, I understand that 60 seconds are left, but the air is gone. And I think, even if I pass out, they'll get me out. And my brain will keep working for five minutes more. At these moments, I don't think to get out of the water, to bear with it, and to do it next time. I don't have this next time, if I don't do it right now. A man must be honest, fair, and he must love to love what he has, his wife, his children, his friends. Love is a verb, which means not to take, but to give. If you give love to your loved ones, then, of course, it'll return to you. Why should he be honest? Because a real man must be honest. A man is as good as his word. If he says he'll do something, but he hasn't done it, so what's the worth of his word? His mind and actions shouldn't be different. And honor, honor for a man is like I don't know. If we see a samurai and he loses his honor, that's it. He takes his own life. If you say something and you don't do it, like, I'll do it tomorrow, you won't. You're a chatterbox. You should be beaten with sticks. One more quality is that a man must be able to fight. It doesn't matter the way it's done. Is it high quality or not? But a man must have this masculine spirit. Wallow, I don't know, bite, fall down, throw the stones, take a stick and bash them over the head. Go all out, but do it up to the end. That shit crack. When I was getting into boxing, I wanted to hang out on the block, especially in spring, when the sun was shining. But I knew I had to go to my training. And I thought about my friends hanging out, and I was on my way to the training. But I knew I wanted to achieve results. 
control. You know, I was training. And then went to see my future wife, to walk around with her. And now when I come to my block, driving my own car, living in my own flat, I see the same guys hanging out on the block. You need to force yourself to do something, even if you don't want to. So, if we speak about spiritual spheres, you need to force yourself to pray, because grace doesn't always descend on you. It happens that grace leaves a monk or a religious man. The Almighty takes this grace in order to see how hard they will work to return it. If grace descended on a person at least once, and he felt it, he would understand when it leaves him. He will understand that something... Do you know fear of varieties? Fear of expectation. Maybe someone is expecting something from you. And when you don't achieve it, they blame you and say you're a chatterbox. Fear behind impossibility. Laziness. Insecurity. But if you never try, how will you know you can achieve it or not? These are big words, but yeah, very few people achieve it. You know, there can't be 100 successful people. For example, there are 100 people on the earth, and all of them will be successful. No, one or two out of them will be successful. And the others will say, it's impossible to be successful. And it's impossible, just because, you know, they don't have an explanation of it. When I got into boxing, I was told to go study instead of training. My teachers asked me, where will boxing take you? Jerry, I'm the greatest fighter that ever stepped foot in a ring. Money will be lost that night. This will be the biggest upset in the century of all boxing. I'm going to float like a butterfly and sting like a bee. George K. hit what his eyes can't see. All of you chumps are going to bow when I whip him. All of you. I know you got him. I know you got him, Dick. But the man's in cover. I'm going to show you how great I am. When you go to work, and as I don't like the word work, I would say when you go to labor, 
to do something you like. Even this is just juggling. But you love it. I think this is a success. And when you go to do labor, and every day you say how much you're tired of this way, this office, this gym, or, I don't know, anything you hate, sooner or later, you'll lose it. And if you got up, smiled, enjoyed the sunbeam, you have to be a little sleepwalker. As me. It seems to me that sadness is the same as despondency, and despondency is a great sin. Some dark thoughts can come from despondency. From the point of view of the Orthodox Church, despondency is a very great sin. I don't have any despondency. I try to avoid it. I strive never to be gloomy, but to go cheerfully towards some of my goals. I'm in a bad mood. Why are you in a bad mood? Just sadness. I want to be sad, to cry. It's better to put on a smile when you're in a crowd than to explain to the crowd why you are in a bad mood. Everything is awesome. Come home and be sad. But don't do it in a crowd of people to be... It's just the type of people which like this moment when somebody feels sorry for them, supports them, and they are so inspired after that. But this is all bullshit. It is a lie. He is upset, and people lie to him to cheer him up. Moody? Get the fuck out of here. Kick him out. And that's it. It would be great. We're not happy with ordinary things. We've stopped to be happy about it. My coach and I went out in the morning when the sun was rising. I was so emotional. Really, I was happy like a child looking at it. How beautiful it was. I can't even describe it in words. I mean, I'm there, and I see the sun rising and leaving the sea. I see it in real life. This beauty is insane. And we were full of energy that day. We even got up at 6 today to go there and see it again. I get up on my two feet in the morning. I have hands, eyes, strength, thank God. You know, I crossed myself, kissed the cross. My God, give me strength for today. We no longer enjoy such very small things. We want to make money. We want to look better than we are. To buy better clothes, to exaggerate its price. And I have jeans for 26 euros, and I adore them. They're so awesome. They're comfortable, they're cool, and they're of a groovy brand. And, trust me, I will wear them for three to four years. Now, money means nothing to me, nor boxing, when it comes to the freedom of your people. So everything I'm doing, if it means hitchhike tomorrow, if it means be ragged, if it means look for a job, I'll be happy because I can go to bed, my conscience is clear, and I didn't sell out or trade my people just because I could be rich in Hollywood with a yacht out here on my, that could be my yacht right there. I imagine it's valued at 200000 but I wouldn't want that damn yacht if I couldn't go back over to Black Navy and protest the black woman being raped. The hell with the, the, the hell with the tapers here. Yeah.
делал такие большие вещи. Мухаммад Али did such great things. There were incredibly huge stones in his training camp. A man wouldn't lift them. They were brought there by crane. And there were names of his opponents written on those stones. Joe Frazier, Joe Lewis, and others. He really loved people. See the way he changed history? When he said he wouldn't go to war in Vietnam, because he shouldn't kill people who had done nothing to him, just because of politics. And he sacrificed himself. His license was taken away. And he was oppressed. But he kept standing his ground. He was changing the course of history. For example, when he had won the Olympic Games, went to the bar, and he wasn't served because he was black, he went out and threw that gold medal away. He was a brilliant boxer. It was just a little ahead of the events of the time. I believe he was an astronaut in boxing. The guys who entered the ring with him, they were far from him. He was showing insane boxing. He did something different. And he went down in history. One of the presidents, I don't remember exactly. I think George Bush started waving his hands in front of Muhammad Ali. He looked at him and showed him, like, are you crazy? He's an insane man. And I've watched his fights, statements. When he was asked what he would do after boxing, he said he would go prepare himself to meet God. And he said that about time we spent at the table, sleeping, driving, taking lift. Insane personality. And the Almighty gives us such personalities for their contribution. People look at them and strive. Do something. I relate to him. And it's also such a coincidence that we are born on the same date. Persistence, work, and, of course, the thing we were talking about at the beginning, faith. It does impossible things. When Muhammad Ali went to his last fights, one of the journalists told him that he was old and he had nothing else except a faith. And he replied, I don't need anything else. I have everything to win. And this is faith.